remember specifically saying I was not going to make this type of video, but here I am. budget-friendly meal ideas video but this one is a Thanksgiving video and many of you asked in comments recently over the last couple months direct messages over on Instagram and I even got a couple emails of people asking me to do this type of video but I gotta be honest I said no time and time again because I knew it would be really timely it would be something I would have to spend an entire day filming but I decided why not give you all what you've been asking for. So today I'm gonna to share with you my $25 budget Thanksgiving dinner. Now, if you are new to my channel and you did not catch the channel's name, it is Running On Plants, so please don't ask me where the turkey is. I eat a gluten-free, whole food, plant-based diet and I don't eat turkey. So my Thanksgiving has zero turkey. But don't click out just yet because if you are in need of some budget-friendly side dishes, for your Thanksgiving, you're gonna find some wonderful recipes within this video. But I did an entire Thanksgiving dinner, what me and my husband will probably repeat and have on Thanksgiving. I'm sharing some of our favorite kind of traditional side dishes with you all, and I'm really excited to just take you through the entire day. It started very early as most Thanksgiving dinner meal preps do. I started out at 625 making some veggie broth, and of course I had a shot for this the day before and I'm gonna take you through the entire step-by-step -step process of how I completed this entire $25 Thanksgiving dinner. Really quickly, I'm gonna share with you my $19 grocery haul and then I'm gonna share with you the pantry items that I also am including and I'll include that uh, just kind of generalized price in the total of this Thanksgiving dinner. I have some veggie broth going in my instant pot that I started about an hour ago or pressure cooker I should say and that is almost done so I'm going to talk real quick. I have a head of cauliflower, five pounds of potatoes, two sweet potatoes, this beautiful head of kale, which was a steal. It was only 99 cents. It's massive. Two cans of green beans, a can of coconut milk, a can of tomato paste, five granny apples, a pack of gluten-free fettuccine, a pound of lentils and some mixed vegetables. So that is what I got for the grocery store and it cost me right around, he's done. Six, six, she's done. All right, this cost me right around $19. Let's jump in and I'll share with you what I'm using that I already have on hand for my pantry. I wanted to quickly tell you how I came up with the budget for this dinner's video. So I went to the grocery store with a $25 budget, but I also have pantry items here on hand that I'm using. So I ended up spending just shy of $19. It was like $18.93 on the items for this dinner at my local grocery store. Now I did go to Winco Foods and I know grocery store prices are different all over, but out of anything else that you can take away from this video, instead of the exact prices or what I spent, is just the budget friendly items that you can choose for your own Thanksgiving meal. The other $6 is kind of what I added in for the items that I already had on hand in case you don't have any of these items in your pantry so that way you can also purchase them in your budget and make this entire spread. It kind of made the challenge more fair, if you will. So even though I didn't spend that additional $6, here are the pantry items that I'm using for today's video. Okay, here are the basics for my pantry that I pulled out that I'll be using today. I always have onions and garlic on hand. Most people have that in their pantry as a staple. I also have the dried minced garlic. If you don't have these items, obviously this is stuff that you would purchase, but I know a lot of you have better spice cabinets than I do. I also pulled out just a plethora of spices I knew I would be using. Salt, paprika, onion powder, cinnamon, and chives. I might add a few more, but you'll see them if I do decide to add them. Like I said, I have minced garlic, which I did already use in the lentils, which you will have seen here in a little bit. And But I also have some uh, minced garlic like this. You can go either or. You can just buy the little cloves of garlic too. But these are all in my typical grocery budget already, and I wasn't going to already buy them if I had them, so I could use them up. I am also going to use a little bit of cornstarch, some cornmeal, which this is really inexpensive. It's like a little over a dollar for me, so super super cheap and then a little bit of sugar 
I'm also using about a cup of gluten-free oats and I did make some, this is still warm, some homemade veggie broth in my pressure cooker. You can make that in your Instant Pot, you can make it on the stove top, but another great way to save money, I just save all the odds and ends of my veggies to make broth. But here are the pantry staples I'm using. I included about six extra dollars in case you had to go out and purchase them, just to make, like I said, this a little bit more fair. things I'm going to do is you can see it's 9 38 in the morning is get my oven set to 475 this baby is going to be running all day I'm also going to take just a regular sheet pan out just a large one and put my two sweet potatoes on them I'm going to scrub these wash them and then just bake these whole on put them on one side and I'm going to chop some onions put them on the other and get these in the oven to roast Let me know in the comments below if you are someone who makes a giant Thanksgiving dinner every year and by the time the meal comes you're like over it. It has been about an hour for me which is like pretty typical for a meal prep. Um, doing the dishes, you know, cutting, chopping, getting everything done but like I'm borderline over it <laughs> just because I still have so much left to do. So my sweet potatoes are out of the oven and I'm going to share it with you a kale sweet potato onion salad that I made last year that I really really loved and I wanted to make it again this year because it's gluten free. So we're going to peel the skins off these, get some kale going and just to saute it. It's basically just a warm winter salad and it's so delicious. <music> wonderful way to preserve memories which is I think why I really like making meals for Thanksgiving like I said my husband and I have our own little traditions I add in some of my family tr traditions some of his which is the next meal you're gonna see but then there are some things that like bring back memories that kind of make you a little bit nostalgic and almost sad one of the things for me that as I'm cutting up these sweet potatoes is I got a little bit sad and I just thought you know what? I'm gonna share this because it's real life um, we had a wonderful, wonderful dog named Marcus. If you're not new to my channel and you've been here for the past year or so, you've seen Marcus in a lot of videos. He passed away in April. It was very sudden. Um, he was an older dog. He had just turned 11. But one of the things every single time when I make sweet potatoes, but also like thinking about back to other Thanksgiving meals, we always used to create little like dinner plates for our dogs and anytime I made sweet potatoes he would be in the kitchen because he would want the skins. I never like the sweet potato skins. People ask me all the time in the comments what do you do with the skins. I typically just take them and put them in my freezer bag now but this used to be Marcus's favorite thing. I'd let them sit on the counter and he'd know they were cooling for him and I would let them him have them. Levi doesn't like them. We still have our Chihuahua Levi. Uh, he doesn't like them. He will still get a doggy plate for Thanksgiving and he'll also get one for today. But that was one of my favorite like memories and traditions my husband and I have. 
that we'll keep doing as long as we have Levi or maybe another dog. But Marcus used to just like sit in the kitchen and just wait for his dinner plate. He knew, hey, it's Thanksgiving, I'm getting a dinner plate. Ah, I'm gonna cherish that memory forever. It makes me so happy. Share a happy or even like a sad or nostalgic memory that you have with Thanksgiving down below. Something that's like a happy sad, not like a sad sad. Um, just because I want to read through the comments and see what you guys are going to share. This salad is a dream. All you need is some baked sweet potatoes. You can also bake them in your microwave if you want to speed this up. I like oven roasted so much better. And then you're just going to saute some kale in a hot skillet with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I like to use a little bit of veggie broth, but you could use oil if you cook with oil or just a little bit of water. Garlic, add some seasonings, toss together with the roasted onions that you roasted along with the sweet potatoes, and then serve it nice and hot. One of the things I will say with making a large meal like this is timing everything. So this is one of the things I actually made last, but of course you're seeing it first. which I'm going to chop up my cauliflower and onions. So I need to know down below, what are your guys' like traditional Thanksgiving side dishes or meal options? When my husband and I first got married, we kind of like pulled together, if you will, our traditions from our families. And I'm gonna share with you one here today that I think is super odd <laughs> that his family does. Um, and, it's, and that's nothing like offensive or anything, it's just not something I grew up with, so you'll see in a little bit. If it's not something you're accustomed to, you might think it's odd as well. I've actually personally never made it. We've been married now 11 and a half years and I've never made this side dish, but it's something very traditional to his family. I've actually never even eaten it because it's not like a, a thing for me. But when we first got married, my husband's favorite food in the entire world is cauliflower. Yes, I know, right? He grew up as a vegetarian. His mom's been vegetarian her whole life. And so I tried to think of something that he would really like as a side dish. So I did cauliflower and onions, roasted in the oven and literally every single holiday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, anytime we're doing like a kind of like one of those kind of traditional holiday meals. That's what he asked for. So I've made it so many times. So that's one of our little traditions that we always have for Thanksgiving and New Year's meal and like I said, Christmas. So that's what I'm making. It's literally so simple. I just do chopped cauliflower, chopped onions. I put a little bit of fresh garlic or minced garlic on top and some salt and I roast it in the oven and it's amazing. I like to chop my cauliflower instead of buying it frozen for this meal, but that is definitely another option. And then once it's all chopped, I soak it in cold water with a splash of white vinegar and make sure that it's nice and clean. I do the same to my potatoes, all my veggies. I don't normally show me washing them. And same with like rinsing my rice. People will leave me comments like, you didn't rinse your rice? Yes, I do. I just don't always show every single step. But I think that roasted cauliflower tastes the best when it's soaked in water with just a splash of white vinegar and then you throw it in the oven with some seasoning and onion and it's so good and for this very large meal we had so many leftovers because it was just the two of us so I would say this meal definitely could feed four to six people. I'm dying to know some of your holiday traditions, whether they're Thanksgiving, New Year's, Christmas, Hanukkah. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know some of the foods that you really enjoy for the holidays. Desserts, sides, mains, all the fun things. If you leave a bunch of ideas, that will be wonderful because I know a lot of people will be looking in the comments for ideas. And of course, I feel like every single family has their own traditions. So I can't wait to read through the comments and see all of your wonderful traditions, but also maybe gather some new ideas for our family in the future as well. Another thing that I like to do when making a really large meal is to make sure I have my dishes started. 
um, before I end the entire meal. I'm not someone who likes to come back to the dishes after everything's done, so I like to fill up a large sink, and then after I do each little segment of the meal, I like to come back and wash my dishes, and then let them dry, and that way I can kind of reuse a little bit. I end up filling my sink about twice. I don't use a ton of soap sometimes, but also we were running really low this day, so I actually sent Joe out, my husband, to get more soap. But it's a great tip if you're having company or if you're making a big, large meal. The next recipe I'm gonna work on is the cornbread. So I just have a, I think this is a six by six dish. That'll be plenty big for the two of us. You can also make this a lot bigger. I have my cornmeal and then I'm going to add coconut milk to it. So if you don't have my newest ebook, this recipe is inside, but you're also gonna get it today, but make sure you check that out in the link below. You're going to want that. It's 25 budget-friendly recipes that are amazing. Great for a family or for a single or for a couple gonna save you a lot of money, so check that ebook out down below. To a bowl, I'm going to add my cornmeal, and I'm going to probably make a full batch of this. So you're gonna need two cups of cornmeal, and I couldn't find my one cup measuring cup. It's around here somewhere. And then you're gonna need about a cup to a cup and a half of coconut milk. Usually I use the light coconut milk, but they didn't have it at the store. You can use either one. It's completely up to you. I would say about a cup and a quarter is good. You can even use the whole can. It just takes a little bit longer to kind of um, bake that way. I'm also going to do a sprinkle of salt. These are great if you want to add jalapenos to the top or if you ever have leftover chili that you want to make a chili bake out of, you can put that in a casserole dish and then put this over the top and then bake it. Typically, I bake it at 375 or 400 degrees for oh, about 20 minutes. See how it gets real thick? It's this is perfect. You're going to want to mix it up. If you need to add a little bit of water or a little extra coconut milk, you can, but you're going to put it in a dish. I do have to spray this dish with a little bit of avocado spray so it doesn't um, stick, but I'm just going to pour this in here and pop it into the oven. The next thing I'm gonna get started on is my shepherd's pie. I have a bag of mixed veggies. I went ahead and made my lentils already in the pressure cooker. This is about half of them, and then some veggie broth that I also made, and I'm gonna start with the mashed potatoes, and then we're gonna whip up a shepherd's pie and get it in the oven. Okay, batch of mashed potatoes number one is a perfect and done. That is how I like to do them. You can also add veggie broth instead of the starchy water, but honestly, that's the best way to do it. So I'm gonna build my shepherd's pie and see what I can take out of the oven to put this in.
last few things. I'm kind of excited. Here is a tradition my husband's family ha has. Like I said, it's a little bit odd to me. I'm used to it now, but when I first started dating my husband, the very first family get together I went to was Christmas. And they had um, mashed potatoes with egg noodles that were cooked in a broth like that was the side it was mashed potatoes and then noodles and then broth and then some people would have gravy some people wouldn't and they would all eat it with like green beans on the side um and dinner rolls and i remember the first time thinking like i've never seen this before it is something that a lot of people i know do in ohio i've never made that side dish i've asked tons of people that i've known over the last few years that come from different areas of you know the united states none of them have had that before it's not something i had growing up in minnesota but for the first time since we've been married we've been married 11 years in july i'm going to attempt to make that and what i'm going to do because i cook gluten free my husband graciously enough eats gluten free then i have my homemade broth that is going to just heat up i'll strain the noodles put them back in the broth on the table and then he can eat them over mashed potatoes again this is not something that i like but is very traditional to him like i said let me know if this is something your family grew up with, with is this something you guys eat i'm actually really curious to know if this is just like a like centralized um kind of thing in ohio or if this is more of like a east coast thing i don't know but we're gonna we're gonna make it today The next thing I'm gonna get started on is my dessert, which is going to be like an apple crumble. I'm gonna get my apples washed, peeled, chopped into my baking dish, and then the crumble on the top, and then have that sitting aside so I can throw it into the oven when I'm ready. and I'm just gonna add a little bit of cornstarch, sugar, and cinnamon. You can also add a little bit of lemon juice if you have some. I don't have any, so it's not getting any, but the cornstarch will help thicken the apples as they bake. And I'm not measuring anything. I would say about a half a tablespoon of cornstarch. Cinnamon is limitless. I love cinnamon. I'm doing about two tablespoons and I'm just sprinkling it in there. I'm also gonna do a pinch of salt. I feel like that kind of sweetens it up a little bit when you add sugar and then you don't have to add as much sugar. And then I am going to use this cane sugar, which I got at Trader Joe's and just a couple tablespoons. You don't have to go over the top. The apples are sweet enough and I'm gonna let this sit for a little while and kind of absorb um, with the juices of the apple. And then I'll add it to my baking dish. Okay, so my apples are perfect how I like them. I let them sit for a few minutes. Like I said, you can add some lemon juice to kind of speed up the process. It's amazing if you do have some. I don't have any on hand, I thought I did. But I'm gonna mix together my crumb topping, which is going to be my oats, cinnamon, a little bit of cane sugar, again, just about two tablespoons. And then my husband picked this up at the store last week because I did make banana bread. And I'm gonna put a couple of tiny little teaspoons on this. So that way when it kind of uh, melts down, it'll be kind of moist. This is something you do not need to add if you don't want to. If you want, instead of adding this, you could add like an almond milk or cashew milk to your crumble to kind of give it a little bit of creaminess, but we have this on hand, so I'm gonna use it.
wanted to quickly say thank you so much for spending this mock Thanksgiving with us. I truly feel like my little YouTube fam is part of our fam as we have shared so much of our lives with all of you over the past year and a half. If you are still watching this video, I want to just say, first of all, I appreciate you being here. Even if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you have a thankful heart and a thankful spirit for all that you have in your life. Obviously, the holidays are more than just food. It's about time with the people that you love and cherish the most. I also want to quickly say that in this video, I am giving away a $100 Amazon gift card to one lucky person who gives this video a thumbs up and leaves a nice kind comment down below. I'll leave a little bit of details in the description box for this giveaway, so make sure you check them out. I can't wait to read through all the comments. This video was so fun to make. So obviously we got two Thanksgivings this year and I you know, I'm just so happy that I could share this with you guys. Thank you so much for encouraging me and asking me to share this type of video. It was definitely challenging to make all of this and film it, but it was definitely worth it because now I get to share all of these ideas with you. Check the description box down below for the recipes that I shared in today's video. I quickly want to say thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did so I know next year to film another but with different ideas. Thank you so much again and I will see you next Thursday. I have a full dinners recipe video that you are not going to want to miss. So make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications so you never miss a new upload from me. I'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.